Welcome back everyone to Hearts of Iron 4. This is Kaiserreich. I am the nation of Austria and we are in the middle of the second Weltkrieg, the second world war. It is November 1939. We have to decide the fate of Poland because we control Warsaw, which allows us to make this choice. We can release a loyal Polish state, which would be a puppet of ours. We can release Poland and grant them Galicia, uh, which is, I think, this region to the south. Or we can have a military occupation. I think I'm okay with releasing them as a puppet. So there you have it. So we no longer control that area there, but not a huge deal, really. Our main concern right now is pushing back the Italian hordes. So that's what we're working on. Now that we've defeated Poland in the east, the Germans should be able to get a, a little bit of a handle on their southern border, and that's going to allow us to deal with the Italians, because right now it's pretty rough. All right, so we weren't able to... We, we can't fight Serbia through a neutral country, uh, so there was really no point in loading my troops down there to try and deal with Serbia. So I've sent these 25 divisions in my third army over to the Russian front instead. And we're going to see what we can do to maybe push things back and maybe drive on Moscow. Things are starting to look a little better in the south of Germany now. Once we are able to push them back into this narrow corridor, then I think it gets a lot easier. Uh, looks like, though, the, the Germans are very soon to take Paris. They're pushing their way through there right on the edge of Paris now. Let's take a look at where this whole thing stands at this point. Casualties are almost identical on both sides. This is a, actually a war summary of all the wars. There's actually five separate wars that are going on, one of which involves the entire Reich's Pact against just Russia. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, there's, sec there's two different things that say Second Weltkrieg. We actually haven't called everybody to war in one of them. All right, looks like Denmark's out of the conflict. Uh, I'm going to pass. I don't really have any desire to annex anything in Denmark. We'll let the Germans deal with that. But that's another country knocked out of this thing. Uh, I'm shifting my panzer divisions over. Now that I called them to the war, Illyria is getting overrun by the Balkans, or by the Serbians. So I kind of made a mistake there, shifting all of my men over to the Russian front and then calling the Illyrians to the war. I should have called them to the war while I had my armies down there. Uh, so major mistake on my part. So I'm sending my seven panzer divisions over here as kind of a, a quick reaction force to hopefully slow things down a little bit. Transylvania has revolted against Hungarian rule. And so Transylvania has declared itself to be a part of Romania. So now Romania looks like it does in our uh, historic timeline at this point, And Hungary has lost a big chunk of their territory. I've got two more Panzer divisions that have just entered into combat, uh, into the field. So that gives us nine that will be able to get down here on this border. See if we can't start pushing back against the Serbians. Things are actually going pretty well right now against the Russians over here. My, my goal is to kind of punch a hole right here and then that will get us within striking distance of Moscow. I want to see how the Germans are doing and getting toward Paris. They're, they're trying to take this territory here. Uh, they're just pushing the whole front line forward. Brazil just entered the war on our side, so that's pretty interesting. Where does that put everything? Uh, so here's the Reich's Pact. You can see all of that, and we're, we're fighting a war on three fronts. Uh, we've got this whole front here with the Italians and the, and the French. We've got the front with the Belgrade Pact, and then we've got the front with the Moscow Accord. So we're fighting three different factions right now. Uh, Reichspacht, there's a big addition with Brazil. How are things going in the American Civil War? Looks like the American Union state has seen better days. Carlist Spain is definitely taking the edge in the Spanish Civil War. If we could just close this big gap right here that will make a big difference all right let's continue our research into military things We've got a fight that happened here uh, my 200 naval bombers went up against six french destroyers doesn't look like anything happened 
You know, we haven't really taken the Navy out for a spin. Why don't we do that? We've got some battleships here. We've got a decent little Navy that we could at least do some patrolling with. Main thing is it's gonna take away from our oil. So we're gonna have to start trading for some more oil with the Ottomans. Let's see if that gives us enough. That's, eh, we're still losing fuel, so we're gonna have to trade for more than that. Uh, let's also trade with Venezuela for some. Uh, I don't want to trade all, use all my factories. Doesn't leave me with a lot of available civilian factories, but that does give us a surplus of oil. All right, we're pushing back against Serbia now that our Panzer divisions have gotten down there. See if we can't make a push toward Belgrade and knock them out of the war. Things are kind of hit or miss right now with the Russians. We're doing okay, but it seems like the Ukrainian front is not doing as well. Azerbaijan's out of the war. The more the Russians knock other countries out of the war, the more we have to deal with them, so that's not good. Boy, it'd be really nice if they could, if the Germans could take Paris and knock them out. I don't know if taking Paris will do it. Okay, we sank a French destroyer and a convoy ship that's a good start just sank four more french destroyers so things are going pretty well for us in the adriatic right now we're definitely doing a number on the french maybe that'll help with uh, long term with maybe cutting off the italians and the serbians we're starting to make make our moves on belgrade here i think maybe what i should be doing though is it's telling our panzer divisions that rather than just doing a wide front, maybe we just want to make a thrust toward Belgrade and see if we can knock them out. So supply is a major factor for us in this very narrow area that we've got here uh, in the mountains up against Italy. So I've shifted some of my divisions up here to help the Germans in the north pushing down. And that seems to be helping turn the tide there. Uh, we can be more effective in areas where there's a little more supply. And if we can push down there, it'll accomplish that goal that I've had of narrowing that front. Uh, Germans have a wide front against the French right now, and they've kind of slowed down in their attempt to make a drive on Paris. So that's not been very helpful. Um, still kind of a mixed bag against the Russians, but by and large, pretty good. We're definitely pushing back on Serbia. Uh, even now, I've only lost 11,000 men in this war, and most of that has come against the Russians. Well then, Serbia has joined the Moscow Accord. Now, we're already at war, so that doesn't really change anything. But that means they've left the Belgrade Pact. Does that mean it falls apart? Yeah, it looks like it no longer exists. So uh, things are consolidating a little bit. And I think that's an act of desperation on Serbia's part as the tide of war turns against them. Uh, things are going well here in southern Germany also. Uh, they still haven't taken Paris, though it seems like that's starting to become more of a possibility. Overall situation, casualties have gone up on our side compared to what we're inflicting. But other than the United Baltic Duchy and the Hungarians, we're all holding up pretty well at the moment. I guess the biggest concern with Serbia and Russia joining sides and the Romanians jumping in there too is that especially because there's a connection here, the Russians can probably send reinforcements into Serbia and widen that front. And that is not a helpful situation for us. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start shifting a few of my divisions from the Russian front to go help the Panzer divisions in Serbia, see if we can't knock them out. Because that'll free up all of these divisions in our pact to start pushing through Romania and then eventually against Russia itself. Archduke Karl Albrecht has been elected as King of Poland. He's the current governor of Galicia and Lodomeria. Uh, so that's a Habsburg king on the Polish throne. That's cool, I like that since they are a friend of ours. Looks like things are looking up against uh, the Russians, at least in our sector, in the center. We might start making a, a greater push toward Moscow. We've taken back pretty much all the territory we had lost to the Serbians. So that, though it has slowed down, is still making steady progress. And we're very near to closing this gap. 
with the Italians. I'd like to cut them off right here if I can and then maybe destroy some of those divisions. Things are going really well on the Western Front too. It looks like they might finally be having some success. Uh, maybe if they can't take Paris directly, they can drive around it. I'm looking at Russia now, and as things are going really well, we're going to drive... Uh, Oh, the French Republic declared war on the Commune of France. Nice. I'm going to try to drive up here toward Petrograd and see if we can't isolate and destroy. There aren't a lot of Russian divisions over on this side because there's not fighting going on. But if we can maybe cut off part of the Russian army, that would be fantastic. I'm going to try to do the same with the Serbians here. I think we're going to probably knock Serbia out of the war before too long. Uh, French Republic has called Hawaii as our ally. Excellent. Yeah, we're just kind of consolidating wars a little bit. Looks like uh, one of the factions in the Spanish Civil War is about to be knocked out. I think the same is going to be true for the fascists in America, but we'll see. With both the Entente and the Reichspakt now at war with the Third Internationale, the Dominion of Canada has called for a conference between their leaders in the Canadian city of Halifax in order to discuss the possibility of cooperation, and the German Empire has agreed. While it's currently unclear how far such cooperation will go, it seems worth the attempt. A representative of the Austrian Empire has been asked to attend. We will be there. So now the Entente is at war with the Socialists. So that brings in Sweden right here. That's, that's not Sweden. Yeah, that's Sweden. That's Norway. That's Sweden. So Norway. Uh, is now in the fight. Get your geography right, Chris. Uh, Entente, that's, uh, it all started with uh, the French Republic getting involved and of course the Canadians now too. So the more the merrier. And we're getting a Lend-Lease for malaria. Okay, cool. The Halifax Conference, leaders from the Entente, the Reichspakt gathered today. Uh, the willingness on the part of the Reichspakt to stay out of both France and Great Britain once the war is done. This would allow for a swift return to Europe for both the French and British exile governments. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that, if that's what needs to happen. Meanwhile, the British have made this landing in northern Germany and cut all the way down and almost split Germany in two. Uh, that's a bit of a problem. We may have to send some help up there to deal with that. I'm hoping the addition of Norway into the fold may help turn the tide on that. Looks like Paris might be about to fall. The French Republic renounces Alsace-Lorraine. So that's part of this negotiation is that, hey, if we're going to fight on the same side, France says they'll let the Germans keep Alsace when the war is over. Fascinating. I thought they took Paris, but now it's looking like maybe they didn't. We've got a cooperation. After meeting with the con in the conference in Halifax, uh, we've worked out the deal to cooperate in our war against the Third Internationale. Uh, both sides having military and naval access to each other. More importantly, the German Empire has agreed once the syndicalists have been beaten, they will take no territory in France or Great Britain and allow both to return. All right, I'm okay with that. Let's get on it. All right, so that puts field and manpower up possibly as high as 8 million on our side, which gives us a significant advantage against the other side. We've still just lost 52,000 men in all the fighting, and most of that has come against the Russians. There it is at long last, April 1940, the fall of Paris. So things are looking up. They're starting to push back against that incursion uh, in the central part of Germany, so that's good news. We've actually got a new doctrine available. Uh, this is going to give us some organization bonuses for infantry, so that's some good news. Uh, we did have a little bit of a pushback uh, on the Serbian front, but that has been solved. I, I shifted some units over to the left to hit that little bulge that they made in our line with the counteroffensive, and now we're pushing back on all fronts. I think Belgrade will fall within the next couple of months. Continuing to push through into the northern part of Russia here. We just got a notification about something that didn't sound good. Naval invasion in Denmark and the Low Countries. Not too worried about that right now. We've actually cut off a significant number of enemy troops right in here. We can see the destruction of a 
bunch of Italian and French forces. If we can complete this encirclement, I'm going to try and put the pressure on here. Oh no, they just broke through. Darn it. Okay, we need to get back in there again and cut them off. This would be major if we can isolate and destroy a dozen or more enemy divisions. All right, so let's talk good news and bad news. Good news, uh, seems like once Paris fell, the front in France is starting to collapse. That's good news. Um, things were kind of rough on the Serbian front for a minute or two there, but now it's looking good. Uh, Italy is now at war with Legionnaire Italy. Um, they're in no faction, but they have just cut a swath down maybe toward Rome, so they may be on the verge of collapsing. I'm out of manpower, so I went ahead and changed over to service by requirement, and so we're going to start seeing a big jump in our available manpower, or at least we should. Uh, we're also out of convoy, so we're going to need some more of those. I think we're doing okay on fuel, though, so I might be able to lower how much I'm trading for, at least for a little while. And that might help with the convoy situation. All right, we've got a new type of fighter that we have completed, fighter number two. Um, actually thinking about maybe making a variant on this one, the B-135. We've got the, we've been using a ton of air experience to level up our doctrines, but now we might use a little bit to maybe make a better weapon. How about that? Eh, maybe not. We'll wait. Things have been going really well on the Russian front, uh, but the problem right now is that while we're pushing east toward Moscow, things are looking really bad in the center here where Hungary's not holding the line against Romania. Uh, so we're going to shift over here, at least temporarily, to try and push that back. See if we can't push all the way to the uh, Black Sea if possible. All right, we're finally seeing a change over here in America where it appears the fascist part of that three-way civil war is out and it's going to become a fight now between the socialists and democracy. Kind of have to root for democracy in that case. Same thing's kind of happening here. It looks like one is about to fall. I think Carlos Spain's probably going to win this one. Uh, so that'll be a victory for uh, paternal autocrats. Interesting. It looks like Japan just entered the war against us. They want German East Asia, so uh, that's a new enemy. Along with Siam. And now all of our allies are going to declare war on Japan. be interesting to see where the U.S. is going to end up falling in all of this once their civil war is over. Same with Spain. Alright, so things are going to start falling back now in Russia because we pulled... 26 divisions off of that front but we're in the process gonna stabilize everything over here and I think long term that'll be the better choice for us this is everybody joining the new war the Venice of the North it really is too with all of the canals and stuff Amsterdam has fallen uh, so things are definitely looking better than they have in a long time on the western front uh, things are looking much better along the Italian front uh, as we have finally pushed into Italian territory and we're making our way in that direction. We've stabilized things over here. We just have to keep an eye out to make sure that things don't completely collapse on, on the eastern front with the Russians. But I think we're doing okay. Let's take a look at the overall situation. This is Syria capitulated. Um, all right. Upwards of 9 million possibly fielded on our side. Certainly not nearly that on the other side. Our casualties are still ahead, but that's okay. We can afford that. Uh, the Batavian Commune and the French are probably going to collapse sooner rather than later. France only has 52 factories, so it's not a huge deal as far as the war effort goes. Britain's got most of it. Britain and Russia. Japan adds a lot, though. 104 factories, so that's a lot of manufacturing capability. A decent amount of divisions too okay so what I'm gonna do is because this is just a terrible place to try and attack and push through I'm gonna hold six divisions right here on this narrow front where I border the Italians 
I'm moving the other 18 over here to the other side. We're going to help the Germans make the final push toward Marseille, which is now the capital. Uh, and then we're going to hit Italy from that side. I think that'll work out much nicer for the overall strategy here. So we'll get those men into position. We'll start attacking. I think we can finish off the French and maybe start finishing off the Italians too. Seems to be working. We're making our way through. We're going to try to push all the way to the Mediterranean. I don't know if taking Marseille will be enough to finish off the French. But as soon as we take Marseille, we can turn east and we can move on Turin and Milan and maybe hit these guys from this side. You're not getting Trieste. Yeah, that seems to be working out nicely. They've stabilized things in the north. Now we just got to push into the low countries here. Awesome. This is looking really good. We're getting a lot of Lend-Lease help right now from a bunch of different nations. Uh, we've got a civil war breaking out in it, uh, India here. Well, the Indian Empire versus the Dominion of India. Dominion of India has taken a lot of territory. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's not looking real good there, the Ukrainian front, but that's okay. It probably won't last that way. Overall situation... Yeah, France is close to falling. I don't think it'll be much longer for them. We take Bordeaux, we take Marseille. That'll pretty well do it. Okay, I think both Turin and Marseille are about to fall. We're in September 1940 now. At the very least, we're going to start cutting these guys off. We've just split the French in two. They're about to split them again over there. Alright, we've got a new Doctrine available. Air Doctrine. We've gotten a bunch of Air Doctrines. Yeah, this is looking really good. We've moved into Italy from this side. Austrian and German forces. How close are the French? Oh, they're so close. They're 81% toward capitulation. Legionnaire Italy wants a non-aggression pact. That's fine. Come on, let's take Marseille. We're there. Almost there. I'm going to push everything we have down into that. Oh, why won't let me take them? Oh, it's controlled by the French Republic. Oh, okay. That's our allies. Excellent news. 94% toward capitulation. There it is. The Commune of France has capitulated. Wilhelm II announced the cowardly Communard nation can no longer withstand the pressure from the overwhelming presence. Yeah, you can say it was all about Germany, but we did our little part too uh, to help make that happen. Now it's all about taking over Italy. What's going on here? The Dominion of Canada. The Canadians have landed on the British southern border and they are pushing their way up to take back their country. I love it. This is fantastic. So we'll take care of the British, we'll take care of the Italians, and then all eyes turn on Russia, and we will go for them, but that'll be for another episode. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below, and we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.